The USS Minor is a frontier in history and the most influential ironclad of all time for many significant reasons. Its revolving turret, full iron plating, and steam-powered engine were all relatively new ideas in naval warfare, and putting these all together was a gamble for the Union, but a risk they were willing to take. Luckily, the Monitor produced successful results in the Civil War by completing its objective to defend the Union harbors. Its battle against the Virginia gave a glimpse of the future as two ironclads met for the first time in history. The Monitor's success would end the thousand-year-old tradition to build wooden ships in Europe, and opened a new realm of possibilities in the sea. It all started when the Civil War began, and the South broke away from the Union to fight for their own freedom, and later, for slavery, which was an agricultural necessity for the economy of the South, and they were not willing to just give it up because the Union told them to do so. In early 1960, the Union's prized warship, the USS Merrimack, was decommissioned in Virginia after four years in service. When the conflict between the North and the South embarked, the Union sailors aboard the Merrimack fled and burned the powerful ship to prevent the South from ever using it. However, the Confederates needed a fleet and somehow built an ironclad out of the USS Merrimack's remains by reinforcing the hull of the ship with iron and placing 10 heavy guns that could easily penetrate the wood of the Union ships. When the construction was complete, the Confederates renamed the famous ship the CSS Virginia and sent it out to destroy the Union fleet and attack their harbors which would allow them to trade with other countries and not be limited to their own resources. In response to this unfortunate dilemma, John Erickson and his team were commissioned to build an ironclad warship by President Lincoln, who believed would be the most effective counter to the Virginia. Lincoln believed that an ironclad could help defend the Union harbors from the Confederate Virginia and contribute to the Union blockade of the South. John Erickson and his team managed to build the most complicated machine of its time in a surprising 100 days or about three and a half months, and named it the Monitor. The lower hull was essentially a 124 foot long, six foot deep iron bathtub divided in half by a main transverse bulkhead. Engines and machinery were on the bulkhead, accommodations forward, with the turret on top. The flat upper raft was a standard warship oak beam and pine deck construction to which the iron plate was bolted on the deck and sides. The upper raft fit snugly over the lower bathtub, strengthened with heavy brackets, and riveted together. When the construction was complete, Lt. John Warden and Samuel Greeney led the Monitor to face its mortal enemy, the CSS Virginia. When they arrived on March 8th of 1862, they discovered that half their fleet was utterly destroyed by the Virginia and that it would be back the next day to finish the job. When the Virginia arrived the next day to finish off the Federal Navy, they discovered that a tiny ship with a turret on top was coming straight for them. The Virginia opened fire, but their exploding shells that worked so well on the other Federal ships did little or no damage to the thick iron walls of the Monitor. On the contrary, the Monitor's 11-inch turrets could fire 165-pound solid shot that did much to dent and disfigure the iron plating on the Virginia. After two hours of shelling the Monitor with no result, the Confederates ceased to fire and Lt. John Eggleston when asked why his gun crews had stopped firing at the monitor, stated that, after two hours of incessant firing, I find that I can do her about as much damage by snapping my thumbs at her every two minutes and a half. After several hours of close combat, the monitor's commander, John Warden, gets temporarily blinded by a shell that blew up close by. The monitor disengaged and retreated to the safety of the shallow waters, and the Virginia, short of ammunition and threatened by the dangerous ironclad, flee to the safety of Portsmouth. This battle resulted in a stalemate, with both sides claiming victory, but it is generally regarded as a strategic Union victory. However, the Monitor did successfully defend the Union forces and stop the seemingly invincible Virginia. In the letters of Lieutenant Samuel Green, it is said that after the conclusion of the battle, Secretary Fox hailed us and told us that we had fought the greatest naval battle on record and behaved as gallantly as men could. For the next few months, the Monitor remained in Hampton Roads protecting the Union fleet there. The Virginia ventured out from Portsmouth occasionally, but never confronted the Monitor again. With the threat from the Virginia neutralized, the Union blockade operations from Hampton Roads were restored, leaving Major General George B. McClellan free to advance his Army of the Potomac up the Virginia Peninsula towards Richmond. During the two-day battle, the Federal Navy suffered 261 killed and 108 wounded in its struggle with the Virginia, more killed and wounded than in any other sea battle in American history at that time. 
This day would remain the bloodiest day in American naval history until December 7, 1941, when the Japanese Navy attacked the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. But no ship lives forever. On December 31, 1862, the Monitor was being towed by the Rhode Island when it was caught in a storm and sunk, along with 16 of its crew. However, its legacy lives on as scientists attempt to preserve its remains in the Monitor National Marine Sanctuary in Virginia. Most of their efforts are focused around the turret, the revolutionary artifact, because it could rotate a full 360 degrees, a feature that no ship had at that time. Winning the Civil War shaped the United States to what it is today, keeping all people equal. During the desperate beginnings of the Civil War, the USS Meyer was designed, built, and delivered in less than six months, just in time to stop the CSS Virginia, a great threat to the Union Navy. Erickson convinced the Washington establishment that it would be the right ship for the Hampton Roads campaign. In fact, the USS Monitor was, as stated, the wrong ship at the right time. A brown water ship designed for a blue water navy. The fact that Erickson had been thinking about this new system of naval warfare for so long meant that he had a clear vision of what it should be like almost as soon as he was requested to build the Monitor. His great genius, however, was to understand that such a novel ship could be built with only tried and tested technology and a trusted network of collaborators. Contrary to the legend, almost nothing aboard the Mar had not previously been built and tested in service, and Erickson limited the suppliers to men he knew or knew he could trust to obtain vital resources, notably iron, in time of war-driven scarcity. After the Battle of Hampton Roads, a new type of naval ship was born. Monitor-type turreted ironclads were widely sought for coastal defense in European and Latin American nations, especially because of their success and affordability. Britain and France, the two major naval powers, weighed the merits of seagoing versus coastal ironclads. In British Parliament, the debates were fierce as some pointed out that the Monitor barely survived its main voyage, while devotees of the latter pointed out the British could build six Monitors for the price and schedule of one warrior. In the end, both Britain and France hedged their bets by continuing to build seagoing armored warships, while also investing in coastal defense. In the 20 years after Hampton Roads, they constructed 28 coastal defense vessels and ramps, including 10 monitors compared with 53 ocean-going ships. Now the conventional battleship could be replaced by a relatively inexpensive alternative that changed naval technology into something closer to our modern navy. The USS Monitor's success opened the gateway for future inventions through the first ever clash of two ironclads, which marked a turning point in naval history as the world turned to ironclads rather than wooden ships for future ideas and creations. The USS Monitor and ironclads in general will always be viewed as an extraordinarily monumental frontier in history.